What's up everyone and welcome to the channel. If you're watching this video, I assume you're either interested in wrapping your own vehicle at a fraction of the cost the shop would charge, or you're just interested in the process of wrapping a vehicle in general. Either way, this video is gonna cover the basic tools you need, some basic methods, and what I've learned over the last 10 vehicles I've wrapped, my personal vehicles, and also friends' vehicles. I am not a professional, I'm somebody that learned myself off of YouTube videos, and if you're in this same situation, this video might be beneficial to you. We're gonna do all this as I wrap this truck next to me through a time lapse, so let's jump into it. The first thing I learned is the importance of prep. Part of prep is making sure the vehicle's clean. The other part of prep is removing all the pieces you need to. So in making sure the vehicle's clean, I would start by first washing your vehicle. Whatever you do to normally wash your vehicle, do that. We're then gonna follow up with a clay bar and some quick wax. This removes any of the contaminants hanging onto the paint. And finally, we're gonna follow up with some isopropyl alcohol, which will remove all oil and wax from the vehicle, making the surface perfect for the wrap to stick to. If you don't do all three of these steps, either dirt will show through your wrap, the wrap won't hold, or you could just get very lucky and everything will work. So after you have the vehicle clean, the next step is removal. So you wanna remove anything off the panels that's gonna get in the way of the wrap. I'm gonna flash a list up on the screen, but this can, includes things like door handle, mirrors, antennas. You wanna get them all out of the way so there are no obstacles when you go to wrap, especially as being a first time wrapper or somebody that hasn't done a significant amount of vehicles, you don't wanna to go to lay down a wrap and then something to get in the way. It is time consuming to remove all these pieces, but it's relatively straightforward. If you don't know how or you aren't familiar with it, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there for all vehicles to take all the pieces off of your vehicle. Now that all the panels are stripped, let's talk about cutting. The first vehicle I did, I used a box cutter and scissors. As soon as I was done with that vehicle, I got online and looked up what tools would make it easier and the tools I came up with were first a razor knife with a back on it. This makes it quicker to cut the wrap off the roll so you don't go through to additional layers of wrap and also to cut the wrap when it's placed on the vehicle so you don't accidentally let the blade go through and hit the paint or tires, anything else you're cutting around. Next knife I'd recommend is a razor knife with snap off blades. A razor knife with snap off blades allows you to keep the tip sharp by snapping off a piece. You don't have to change out the blade or sharpen the knife, which saves you time. The third are magnets. You'll see me use them throughout this video. I'll put a piece of wrap up without taking the backing off and I'll hang it there with magnets covered in metal. Now with these tools that you can get for under $20, you can cut the wrap from the roll, hang it on the vehicle with the magnets and trim the piece down to size to reuse any extra and also to make it easier to work with. You can see me repeat this process for every panel that I do. When trimming the extra, make sure to leave a couple inches along the outside so that you can grab on those inches while you're stretching the wrap out. If you don't grab onto that extra and you grab onto the wrap that's gonna be applied to the vehicle, it's possible the oil from your hands transfers to the wrap and then makes it harder for it to stick. Now that you have your piece of wrap trimmed down to size, let's get into applying it. So I'm gonna break this section down into two parts, complex panels and simple panels. Panels that fall under the simple category are roofs, hoods, tailgates, bedsides, doors, anything that's relatively flat, you don't have any hard corners. For these, use five steps. First, you wanna remove the backing. Whenever you remove the backing, you don't wanna let the wrap hit anything because it has the potential to pick up dirt from whatever it's hitting, and you would either have to start over with a new piece of wrap or just enjoy the textured feel the dirt adds to the wrap. Once you have the back, next you're gonna lay the wrap down. So you wanna position this so it's remotely in the place in correct direction, and then anchor the center of the wrap by pressing the wrap to the vehicle. Now that the center of the wrap is anchored, you can grab onto the extra lip you left on the sides and pull the wrap out from the center to the edge to flatten the wrap out. Once the wrap is flat, you can then use a squeegee to get out all the air between the panel and the wrap. You can use your razor knife to trim the excess off. You wanna leave about a millimeter around the panel so you can fold the wrap around the edge. And last, you wanna post heat all the edges and any severe stretches. This is a very important step and we'll go into more detail a little bit later. So now moving on to complex pieces. Complex pieces are bumpers, mirrors, door handles, and I consider them complex because they have hard turns. 
Now, on these hard turns, it makes it easier if you use inlays and multiple pieces. When I mention multiple pieces, most people don't want to see the seams. So to this, I would ask them what they're using the car for. If you are using your car for a show card that will be judged in competitions, I would recommend you don't do this yourself. You get a professional to do it. Your first time wrapping a vehicle isn't going to come out professional looking. There are going to be mistakes, but for the most part, it'll look pretty good. So if you're not going to be entering your car in shows where it'll be judged and it's just a daily driver or a track car, you should definitely try this yourself. So now that I've convinced you that multiple pieces are good, let's go over some tips for hiding the seams to the best of our ability. Most of the time when you need multiple pieces or inlays, they're around a hard body line. You can use this hard body line to hide the seam. This is where another tool comes in. I use knifeless tape. And what knifeless tape is, is basically dental floss with a sticky backing. You lay this down on the hard corner, you wrap over it, and then you're able to pull the floss through the wrap to cut it, making a nice straight edge. Using the knifeless tape and positioning the seam on a hard body line is going to be a lot less noticeable than it is if it's on a flat piece. Once the complex piece is wrapped, you want to make sure you also post heat the seams, the edges, anything on this complex piece. Now we touched on heating, let's get more into detail of how you can use heat when wrapping a vehicle. I've used heat in three main ways when wrapping a vehicle. So first, the heat makes the wrap easier to stretch. Now I will caution you, making it easier to stretch also makes it easier to overstretch. If you overstretch wrap, it can lead to discoloration and be more likely to pull away from the panel. So I try and stay away from heat to make a wrap easier to stretch. I also use Avery Denison, we'll talk about brands but their wrap is easier to stretch where I don't find myself needing heat that often. The second way I've used heat is to return a piece of wrap to its original form. So I might be trying to apply something, stretch something, lay down something and make a mistake. Wrap is nice because you can detach that piece, pull it back off the panel, heat it up and it'll go back to its original form. This leads us into the third way you can use heat and the way you should use on every panel is post heating the edges. What post heating is, is heating up a piece to a certain temperature where it no longer wants to return to that original form. You want to do this on edges, seams, and stretches because after you stretch it, if you leave the vehicle in the sun and you don't post heat it, it'll be more likely to pull away from the edge or get little fingers which are ripples along the edge of the vehicle. Now when you post heat it, it doesn't want to pull away and it'll hold that shape. Now when buying a wrap, the brand and style of the wrap matter. I've personally used Vivid, Oracle, KPMF, Avery Denison, and I've even used eBay wrap to wrap a vehicle. My personal go-to is Avery Denison. I think they have a good line of colors, good price, and it's the easiest wrap, in my opinion, to work with. KPMF is my second favorite because of the unique color line you can't get from the other brands. Vivid and Oracle are good. I've heard good things about them but they don't offer many colors that Avery or KPMF already don't offer, so I choose to go with those two as my go-to. Now, if you stayed till this point in the video, you're probably thinking, all right, stop talking, I wanna buy the wrap, I wanna get to this. So where should you buy the wrap at? There's two places I'd recommend. If you're gonna get an Avery Denison wrap, I would recommend Fellers, they've had great service. I've ordered off them for about seven years at this point, and if they ever mess up, they more than compensate you for it. Fellers doesn't sell KPMF, so who I would direct you to is Metro Restyling. Another good shop, never had problems with it. I just started buying from Fellers before I bought from Metro Restyling. Now that the wrap is down, let's take a closer look at the wrap and highlight some of the areas I talked about previously. As you can see, I have everything. I have all the exterior pieces put back, the cab lights, the mirror, the handles, but I have yet to install the interior, the A-pillars, the door panels. Part of this is because I also have additional projects coming up for the inside of the truck, but it also goes to show how much you need to remove when wrapping the vehicle. Next, we're gonna take a look at a piece that I forgot to post heat, and I can still do it after to fix it, but this is what happens if you don't post heat your stretches. All right, so if we look here, we see that the wrap is pulling away from the edge. So when I finish this, it was all laid down nicely. I can push it back and make it stick. Looks good there. Now what I need to do after this is I need to post heat this piece. I need to heat it up to about 190 degrees and then it won't pull away again. This front bumper has a lot of hard angles, turns, curves. It is wrapped in 19 pieces. 
I have 19 pieces down on this bumper and you can barely see any of the seams. Let's take a closer look. All right, so anybody looking at this vehicle is just gonna overall look at the vehicle, see the two sides of the wrap, and say, ah, cool wrap or shitty color. They're not gonna take a close look. But if they do, let's go down here. We can see one of the seams right here along this line. And you can't really see it unless you look for it. We have other seams here, here, along the bumper, along the top. So if you're worried about using multiple pieces, I would not be. And that concludes today's video. If you're gonna be doing this to your own car and you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. I've done this over several vehicles and I would be more than happy to help somebody else looking to get into this. If you did like the video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in either the second part of this video, which will be laying down the paint lines, the accent lines to make it an art car, or in the interior project that I'll be doing up next for the truck, feel free to subscribe or not. But either way, it's on to the next project for me.